Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Uh, UN Security Council expresses grave concern over Ukraine, the war that is, uh, as BBC and others have called, the forgotten war in Europe. It is certainly spiraling out of control this evening and has been for several days as we have been reporting here. Uh, the UN Security Council expressed grave concern on Tuesday over the dangerous deterioration in eastern Ukraine and called for a halt to the violence. The members of the Security Council expressed their full support of the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Ukraine. And the Security, Security Council said in a statement, the members of the Security Council called for an immediate return of a ceasefire, uh, excuse me, to a ceasefire uh, regimen. The Security Council included both Russia and Ukraine, according to Reuters here, which is rotating member of the council, but both nations had agreed to the Security Council statement, which noted the unrest severe impact on the local civilian population. And it certainly has had exactly that. Now, what's interesting, though, is that it has been, uh, it's been Kiev under Petro Poroshenko that has been making the advances, according to uh, several different sources uh, in, in the media now have stated that it is Poroshenko that has been making those advances. Even under Ukrainian news reports, they have made offensive attacks and made uh, headway, especially around Donetsk, uh, the Donetsk region there. Uh, but I want to share with you some interesting insights here. This is from the BBC Today, Ukraine, uh, Advika, the front line of Europe's forgotten war. The reason they call Advika the front line, it is a major industrial complex area right there. And of course, what, uh, what Advika does have that you don't see much of in Ukraine, and that is that uh, it's got a lot of fighting. It's just north of Donetsk there, and there is heavy fighting. Now, what really gets me, though, is the perception that is made by BBC. Listen into this just a little bit. As well as Brazilians. It's like a concert every night. They can't sleep. They go to work by the bus, and there is a shooting all around. But even for Abdiyevka, a city with a valuable industrial prize, which had already seen many battles, today felt like a new, uncertain chapter. You can see people just milling about, going about their everyday business here. While gunfire, mortars, artillery, just a short distance from here, you can hear it there, in the industrial area on the edge of this small city. There's been a violent stalemate in eastern Ukraine for two years. In that time, I've rarely witnessed such a presence of the Ukrainian military. Now, the thing is, though, is uh, as we see BBC, BBC, though, seems to clearly, uh, you know, they're bringing the Ukrainian side of the story, but very few ever bring the separatist side of the story or share that. That doesn't make mainstream media because the propaganda to beep up uh, Petro Poroshenko continues on in all of the MSM news there. But let me share with you, though, a little bit about what is actually going on. This here is from Patrick Lancaster, and uh, this is a particular uh, uh, portion of the war that is happening where uh, Petro Poroshenko has been uh, lobbing grads and uh, uh, tank shells and et cetera inside of their region there. And uh, this is actually being shared with us here on uh, Victor uh, Hukonovets uh, on his uh, website. It says, apartment building hit by artillery fire twice in Donets today. Now, this is not in the same city there, but watch the, the passion uh, that, that they're dealing with. And for them, it's more of a fear because, as you can see even by the photograph on your screen, the huge hole in the sides of the walls of this apartment building. Listen to what uh, Patrick says here in this video here. Right now we're here at the district of Donetsk, and just two hours ago, shells rained down on this apartment complex, this civilian apartment complex. We've talked to the residents here. They say, luckily, there was no one injured. They say the shells came, which you can see. And this direction is Adevka, and that is where the Ukraine military is stationed. We asked this residents why the Ukraine army wants to shoot on this residential area. And they said they, they don't know, they don't have words for this. 
you're able to see here as they do uh, using a little small drone there to be able to show some of the footage there. You can see the shelling holes in the side of the building. So yes, both residents on both sides of this war uh, are definitely paying a price for this ongoing war. But the thing is, is you have to keep in mind the separatists here, these are majority in Eastern Ukraine, these are all Russians. And the question is, is what are, what are they going to face if they, if, if they, if their defensive uh, uh, forces that are fighting for them, and no doubt Russia also uh, sending in uh, fighters as well, maybe paid mercenaries, just like Ukraine is using, Ukraine brought in uh, brand new battalions of foreign fighters to fight against uh, uh, the uh, separatists here in eastern Ukraine. But the separatists in eastern Ukraine are faced with genocide if the Ukrainian soldiers break through because uh, it will not be a good day for these people at all if anything such as this were to happen. Uh, another interesting story too I wanted to bring to your attention that I picked up of um, earlier today. This is on global research and um, just to kind of show you, and, and it does kind of go hand in hand with the war here going on, on in Ukraine, uh, but this here is uh, a man called Flemish Father Danel Maïs. He's 78 years old, lives in Syria, and he spoke out about the media, media bias that is going on inside of Syria. And the same type of bias is what's been happening in Ukraine. It says, the title of the article here, the media coverage on Syria is the biggest media lie of our time. An interview with Flemish priest in Syria, something that he stated there. Uh, he's 78, like I said, lives in Syria in the 6th century old Mar Yaqub monastery in the city of Karar, 90 kilometers north of the capital of Damascus. Uh, Mr. Dango has been a witness to the civil war and according to him, Western reports on the conflict in Syria are very misleading. In short, as he states, quote unquote, the Americans and their allies want to completely ruin the country. That's a shame, isn't it? The interviewer says, you're very critical of the media coverage on Syria. What is bothering you? And of course, Father Daniel states here, which I'm not into calling anybody father, but we'll just say Mr. Daniel here says the idea that a popular uprising took place against President Assad is completely false. I've been in Kara since 2010, and I have, been, I have seen with my own eyes how agitators from outside Syria organized protests against the government and recruited young people. That was filmed, aired by Al Jazeera to give the impression that a rebellion was taking place. Murderers were committed by foreign terrorists against the Sunni and Christian communities in an effort to sow religious and ethnic discord among the Syrian people. While in my experience, the Syrian people were actually very unified. Before the war, this was a harmonious country, a secular state in which different religious communities lived side by side peacefully. There was hardly any poverty, education was free, and health care was good. It was only not possible to freely express your political views, but most people did not care about that. So uh, just uh, this was interesting to say that. Uh, the interviewer says, Mother Agnes Mary Miriam of your uh, Maria Cub, St. Jacob Monastery is accused of siding with the regime. She has friends at the highest level. And, he, and Mr. Daniel responds this way here, Mother Agnes Maria, Miriam helps the population. She has recently opened a soup kitchen in Aleppo where 25,000 meals are prepared five times a week. Look at it as miraculous that we are still alive. We owe that to the army of Assad's government and to Vladimir Putin because he decided to intervene when the rebels threatened to take power. I think it's a very interesting article there. It goes quite a bit on there, and I'll post a link to this article inside of there. And of course, my point is, is that we're seeing this from a, a priest that is living inside of Syria, just north of Damascus there, about 90 kilometers. That's about halfway in between there and Aleppo. And he has seen this firsthand for himself, exactly what has been going on. Imagine if that is happening there. What do you think is happening in Ukraine? And by the way, speaking of churches, we have heard that that is another thing that is happening by the uh, Ukraine government. They are targeting again the churches inside of eastern Ukraine using precision guided bombs to take those churches out. If you don't think it's a religious war, do a little digging. You'll find out again it's another way that Rome would like to silence the Eastern Orthodox Church. 
I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live.